So now we are at the summary and close. Thank you so much, Claire. See you around the campus. Uh, in terms of summarising today and comparing it with the vision of the committee, um, I wanted to start by particularly acknowledging um, Vicky MacDonald for the work that she did leading the whole planning team uh, through the last four months on this issue. she uh, We're very sad she can't be with us today, but that's the way it is. But I particularly wanted to acknowledge her and uh, give a bouquet from all of you to her in her absence. Uh, because what we want to do is, again, make the whole profession re more resilient, to build our strengths, to build our ability to reflect, uh, and to unpack leadership in different ways, to think about how we can contribute, to think about how we can grow ourselves, uh, and I'm very grateful to all of the speakers who have explored many different ways across the GLAM sector that we keep moving um, and many different ways that we can um, take our next set of journeys, whether they're up elsewhere, sideways across the profession, or whether they're about uh, finding different ways to fulfil um, the roles that we're able to take in work and in home. So our last speaker today to give us our closing um, words is Robert Knight, who was a wonderful president of the Australian Library and Information Association and has had a passion about leadership and leading change in communities, which has always inspired me. Um, and I think looking at his leadership journey, there have been many opportunities that he's been given and many things which he is always really good at sharing that he has discovered as part of the process. Um, so with those few words of introduction, I might pass over to you, Robert, and thank you for giving us your time today. You'll have to unmute yourself. Thanks so much, Roxanne, for that very kind introduction. Um, we go back a long way, but we won't say quite how far. Uh, so look, uh, without further ado, delegates, good afternoon. I hope you've thoroughly enjoyed the fantastic lineup of speakers at this afternoon's information online in-depth series of virtual events. I am really honoured to be uh, invited to provide some closing comments. And these will be from my own perspective of management over many years and leadership. I have had a close personal relationship with leadership for many years, commencing with my unexpected appointment to a leadership role at a large regional organisation, the River Anna Regional Library, in 1993 at the age of 35. My appointment came after my predecessor was ousted from the position, an inauspicious start to my career in leadership, but also a learning experience that was as swift as it was brutal. I learned a lot in a short time, made my fair share of mistakes and claimed a few victories along the way. But fortunately, I found myself to be part of a group of library colleagues who were also undergoing leadership initiation. And with mutual encouragement and the good fortune to be part of the library fraternity that encourages and supports its colleagues, I soon became acutely aware of the advantages of great associates shared visions and legendary leaders. It is the possibilities that are bound from informed and inspired leadership that compelled me to choose leadership as my Alia presidential theme back in 2019-20. Leadership is an enigmatic term that is thrown around in almost every workplace at some time or another. I use enigmatic as a descriptor of leadership because it's an oft misused and misunderstood term. Leadership is also one of my favourite topics because it has such wide ranging and critical implications for organisations. So what actually is leadership? Kevin Cruz, founder and CEO of LeadX, sums it up nicely. Mm -hmm. Leadership is a process of social influence which maximises the efforts of others towards the achievement of a goal or goals. Kevin notes that his description suggests leadership stems from social influence, not authority or power. Leadership requires uh, others, and that implies they don't need to be direct reports. No mention of personality traits, attributes, or even a title. There are many styles, many paths to effective leadership. It includes a goal, not influence, with no intended outcome. These attributes very much align with my own view of leadership 
and are some of the founding principles that I perceive to be a critical success uh, and to well-led organisations. We find leaders in almost every aspect of our lives. There are political leaders whose influence may or may not concur with our own view of the world. Mm. There are workplace leaders who can help to create a positive leadership experience or a less than ideal one. There are social leaders in our own circle of friends and acquaintances, some of whom are self-appointed and others who naturally emerge as those people who always arrange the best gigs, Roxanne, <laughs> and many more. Over the past 40 years of my career in libraries, my perceptions, practices and thoughts have been shaped by some truly inspirational leaders and, fortunately, just a couple of folk who remain memorable for less positive reasons. But importantly, I have learnt something from each of them. Leadership is found everywhere across organisations. But when we talk of leaders, our thoughts naturally flit to the senior people at the top of the management ladder. There are those with director or manager in their title. But there are also people who have become acknowledged experts in their field, those who have been recognised as thought leaders, some who have a reputation for innovation, people who contribute to library associations and or the plethora of industry-based user groups that are vital to the operation of libraries, or those who have made an impact nationally and internationally through their commitment to the profession. There are many different types of leadership and for the library and information sector to survive, we need them all. I have a personal philosophy that life is all about relationship management, family relationships, social relationships and professional relationships in the main. This revelation came to me when I enrolled in a lifeline counselling course over 20 years ago and subsequently became a lifeline telephone counsellor. This meant that at times I became responsible for the well-being of anonymous callers and had to very quickly establish rapport and manage the relationship with the person at the other end of the phone line. I also started to take more notice of my own relationships and those of my family, friends and colleagues. Many years ago, a close friend of mine badly wanted a better relationship with his father and asked what I thought he should do. My response was to start the relationship, start with the relationship you have and work towards developing the relationship you want. The same is true of leadership. It is always a work in progress that requires careful relationship management both for leaders and those who are experiencing the leadership of others. There has never been a more important time to focus on leadership in the Australian library sector. The 2019 LAS Workforce Diversity Report demonstrated that libraries have some way to go in developing a truly diverse workforce. To progress this diversity, we need several things to align, including to ensure that this education is turning out work ready professionals the development of a stronger focus on management skills to secure managerial roles for list professionals, a better understanding of what our emerging leaders need for career progression, clearer identification of the challenges, opportunities and successes in current and future leadership development and mentoring programs. The ALIA Professional Pathways Program will be a key strategy to support the future prosperity and development of the list sector. My only advice is for current leaders to be generous with mentoring and sharing their knowledge and for emerging leaders to embrace leadership opportunities, be prepared for the thrills and spills and enjoy the ride. Thank you all so much for listening.